Hi everyone, welcome. Um, I'm doing a bit of an informational session about sunscreen and sunscreen education. So my name is Alexis. I, um, I'm a birth and postpartum doula. I have my bachelor's degree in nutrition. I have my CrossFit level one training and I also work with BirthFit. Um, so, and I'm a beauty counter consultant as well. So my general like scope is pretty wide. Um, I really focus on health and wellness of um, moms, like parents through the parenthood transition and children, babies in particular. So that's like my, my focus, so to speak, um, but it's still like pretty wide, um, general health and wellness. So that's what I'm here to share with you. Um, I got involved with Beauty Counter because I am in this health and wellness space, especially with um, after becoming a mom myself, I was learning more and more about products that were maybe not containing safe ingredients. Um, that there's kind of like really lack of regulation in the system for creating beauty products and personal care products. Um, I kind of knew that like some ingredients or some products may or may not be safe before, but I wasn't really like sure what to look for. I didn't have any concrete evidence. Like I typically, maybe I would go into the organic natural um, product section when I was shopping for personal care products, but otherwise like I didn't really know what I was looking for. I didn't even know what I was looking at. Um, if it said no parabens or um, no phthalates, great. Um, so that's about the extent of my knowledge when I started hearing about Beauty Counter. Um, and when I heard about them through other healthcare professionals and nutrition professionals especially, um, I was kind of appalled. We only restrict about 30 ingredients in the US currently to be used in personal care products. Um, the, there hasn't been a major federal law passed for personal care products since 1938. So it's been a very long time. We're going on 82 years now that we've had any new um, legislation passed there. Um, interestingly enough, like we do a lot of advocacy work and so there was actually a, um, a hearing looking to um, potentially change some of this because currently the FDA has no um, authority to be able to change any of the um, or to like say something needs to be recalled they have no regulations on if something needs to be considered safe or not safe there's like no standards that really have to be met um, and if something is unsafe then they can't do anything about it and when there was um, the hearing happening um, it's pretty amazing if you have time to go look at it. Uh, if you want to just watch like a little clip, you can type in like FDA hearing um, for like U.S. Congressional FDA hearing on personal care products. Um, I think that they really talked about like a baby care product and if they could pull it off the shelf. And it was pretty appalling to hear from the horse's mouth that it was just like they can't do anything about it. So we're working on it, and that has a lot to do with Beauty Counter. Our CEO, um, Greg Renfrew, is the founder. She got to um, go be an expert witness for that hearing. Um, she was the only one for the beauty industry as a whole, and we're a pretty small company still. We still are growing by leaps and bounds. Um, we're only about eight years old now, so it was pretty amazing that out of all the beauty companies, we were chosen to be the expert in the room, which I think shows that we are, you know, we truly are the leaders in clean products and clean beauty, which is pretty exciting. And we're really excited to see that things are changing. So how does this relate to sunscreen? Um, a lot of the sunscreens on the market are just not really that great. Um, they are full of ingredients that are not really safe for you to be having on. Um, a lot of them can be linked to cancer or um, hormone dysregulation. Um, 
they can irritate your skin, they can cause damage to coral reefs, like there's a whole load of issues with sunscreens. Um, so you really want to be making sure that you're choosing a safe one. So we'll get into that at the end. Um, we were just going to talk a little bit about sun in general. So we have all these different rays. We have UVA and UVB. So UVA can, um, it's the one that causes a lot of the aging in our skin. Um, and it can really penetrate deep into our skin, like really past the superficial layers. Um, it penetrates clouds and glass. So even if you are inside, if there's still quite a bit of sun happening, even if there's not a lot of sun happening, it still penetrates clouds. And so in terms of aging and, um, and contributing to your risk for melanoma cancers, UVA is really what you want to be protecting against. Whereas UVB is the one that burns, it causes more of that superficial um, damage, inflammation, sunburn, and non-melanoma skin cancers. So those are not great either. You don't want burns. Um, the more burns that you have, the more at risk you are for having a, um, some sort of skin cancer come up at some point. So it's really important to protect yourself from both those. So part of the problem, <laughs> um, part of the problem there too, is that then we have all these different SPFs. Um, and we really want to go for the, the higher SPF because more is better, right? Um, SPF is the measurement of defense against sunburn, primarily UVB. So getting an equal UVB to UVA is really important, but it is actually really difficult to find. And the higher the SPF, it tends to be the, the more imbalanced the UVA to UVB protection is. Um, and also, there's not that much of a difference between an SPF 30 and an SPF 50. There's only 1% of um, increased protection between SPF 30 and SPF 50. So it's really a marketing thing there where they're just trying to share with you that, oh, you know, this is a higher SPF, you're gonna be more protected, when in reality, it can cause you to be out in the sun longer, to use less um, other protection. You'll Maybe you'll go out during the peak hours you, because you think that you're more protected with a higher SPF, when actually you aren't really that much more protected at all, especially from UVA rays, um, which you won't see burns from UVA rays, but you will get a lot of aging signs and um, more risk for developing melanoma. So we really just don't want to be doing that. Um, and then, so we have some different kinds of sunscreens out there. There are chemical sunscreens, which absorb the sun's UV rays. Through a chemical reaction, the sunscreen dissipates the, UVA, the UV rays. So it kind of like reacts on your skin and then they bounce off, which is pretty cool. Um, but a lot of those ingredients tend to be the ones that are pretty harmful, especially to the coral reefs, um, which has been a big deal. If you go to Hawaii, you have to use a specific um, sunscreen that isn't going to be causing coral damage to the coral reefs. Um, and then there's a mineral sunscreen, and this is like a physical barrier on your body. So it's not going to bounce anything off, but it's just gonna be like if you were wearing um, a, a piece of clothing that was like UV specific, where it's just gonna keep your um, skin covered and keep the UV rays from penetrating your skin at all. They're usually made with zinc oxide, or um, sometimes a combo of zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. Um, and we want to make sure when we're using a mineral sunscreen that the particles aren't, that they are not non-nano. So if they are nanoparticles, then they are so small that they can enter into your bloodstream or they can be inhaled, which can cause health problems. So you wanna make sure that you're choosing a sunscreen that is non-nano and make sure the company that you're purchasing from is constantly evaluating their particle size because 
if they're not keeping an eye on it. Particle size can vary and so they can end up with smaller particles than necessary and then um, you end up with health problems because again, there's no regulation, nobody's required to do this testing, so you can't be sure that it is actually non-nano. So there's a little bit about um, different sunscreens, we covered different UV rays. Um, so we talked a little bit about like ingredients that we want to steer clear of. And some of those are oxybenzone, um, octosalate, homosalate, avobenzone. Um, they're all absorbed into the body after a single use. This was a study that came out last summer and was a big deal because it showed a not that there was necessarily a cause of that because they enter the bloodstream it's going to cause health um, harmful health effects but just the fact that it does absorb into the bloodstream very quickly um, and also that they would stay within the blood um, and be detected weeks after it had been used um, it just made it it made people start thinking that they needed to put a little bit more research into a lot of the ingredients on the market. There's like 80,000 ingredients on the market for use and only about 10% of them have any sort of safety data on them at all. And it's not like extensive safety data, it's a little bit of safety data. Um, some of them have more than others. Um, and so we just don't have enough information about a lot of those ingredients to know if it's okay for them to be just floating around in our bloodstream. Um, we know that oxybenzone causes endocrine disruption and increased uterine weight, which is not good, um, not something that we want. So it's just something to keep in mind. Um, and another thing with the SPF issues too, if you have a higher SPF, you're gonna have a higher amount of those ingredients in there also. So um, that means it's more that's going to be getting into your body. So we just, those are some things to keep in mind when we're choosing sunscreens that are out on the market. Um, and we really, want to make sure that we're finding safe options for everybody. Beauty Counter has sunscreen options, um, but there are others that are out on the market too that are, we find, equally safe. Um, they just may not, like with mineral sunscreens, they're going to leave like a pretty white cast on there, um, which is like not fun to have, um, especially if you have darker skin tone. Um, you don't want to be leaving a white cast on your skin. That's just not something that you're looking for. So some ingredients to watch out for when you're looking for a safer sunscreen. Um, fragrance is number one. Fragrance is marked as a trade secret and um, there have been studies that have shown that fragrance fragrance listed on the ingredients list can contain up to 3,000 different ingredients um, and they're undisclosed so we have no idea what they are. One of them often is phthalates and phthalates are known hormone disruptors. We know there's enough research, there's enough data to show that this is a known hormone disruptor and something that is really serious that we don't want to be messing around with in our bodies and that is almost always in fragrance because it needs to keep everything um, the scent around. So watch out for fragrance, always. Um, watch out for parabens, also another hormone disruptor. PEGs and aerosols, those are all ingredients that you often find in sunscreens that are um, inactive ingredients that you wanna watch out for. In terms of active ingredients that you want to avoid, like I said earlier, oxybenzone, octanoxate, octyl, methyl, zycinamate, homosalate, octosalate, and octocrylene. Um, those are going to cause coral reef damage and um, are 
are on a list of having things like uh, carcinogenic effects, uh, hormone disruption, or skin irritation. So if you are really, when you're looking for sun protection, sunscreen is actually the last thing that you want to be thinking of. Um, and for proper sun safety, you want to avoid the sun between 10 and 2 p.m., if at all possible. I'm outside a lot of the time during that time of day, so I just make sure that I take other precautions. Um, you wanna cover up as much as you can, especially wear a hat, um, sunglasses if you can, um, be in the shade as much as possible. Um, and then also, you I mean, if you can't do all of those things, you wanna put sunscreen on the parts of your body that are gonna be exposed to the sun, especially if it's going to be during those times of peak sun hours. And you want to make sure that you are applying properly. You need at least one ounce liberally applied to your body at least 15 minutes before you go out into the sun and then you need to be reapplying immediately after you're swimming sweating towel drying and then at least every two hours um, unless the sunscreen that you're purchasing says like maybe reapply more because it's not it doesn't have as much staying power um, and application really is the number one thing especially when you're using a um, a mineral sunscreen which is a physical barrier if you're not putting it enough on there then you're not going to be covering up enough in order for it to actually give you a physical barrier and so then you're not going to be protected so it's really key all right so we have some recommendations in terms of safer sunscreen of course i recommend beauty counter um, Ours is formulated so well that the white cast that it leaves is very minimal, if not at all. Kind of depends on how, um, like the range of where your skin is at, how much you're gonna notice it. Um, our basic, like this is our big tube of sunscreen and this is what I use at home um, for like body wise. It's an SPF 30. Um, and it smells delightful and I use it all the time. It lasts us quite a while when you're needing to apply an ounce liberally all the time, then um, having a big bottle of it is really key. So that's kind of our basic one. We have a stick too. We have some smaller sizes. We also have an aerosol, not an aerosol can, but like a, a mist and it's a mechanical um, can. It's pretty cool. It has like a, a bag inside of it. So it doesn't use aerosols, which can be pretty harmful. Um, and that one helps with the white cast as well. Um, it doesn't, it just is a little thinner in terms of like how it's gonna go on. So you can still get the sun protection that you need without getting like such that heavy lotion feel, if that makes sense. Um, we also have tinted sunscreens too. So this can be like, I mean, for me, this is like, I would like to look a little bit more tan before I put it on. But also if you're a person of color, like this is not gonna leave the white cast that the um, regular sunscreen is gonna leave which is um, something that's pretty important. So we have a light and medium, and then we have a medium and deep. So those are options. And we also have a facial sunscreen that is not tinted and the Dew Skin Tinted Moisturizer with SPF also. Um, I use both, I love both. Um, this one's kind of more like a like a little Instagram filter. It doesn't give a ton of coverage or color, but it gives just enough to kind of like smooth some things out and make you look nice and glowy. And then this one's just great for your face in general. Um, and you can wear it underneath foundation. So that works out really nicely. It doesn't leave a white cast. It doesn't on me, as you can see, I'm kind of pale, but um, I don't notice a white cast and it does not break me out. Normally I break out really easily with a lot of things. Um, beauty counter is probably the only thing that I don't break out with for the most part. Um, and yeah, I, I love that. 
And then another thing to keep in mind is that if you are using mineral-based sunscreens, they tend to be a bit drying. So you tend to come out um, from a lot of time in the sun and using a lot of sunscreen and your skin might be a little drier. I like to recommend doing exfoliation so you can make um, for yourself a sugar scrub, which is really nice and um, just like a bit of oil and sugar and maybe some is a couple essential oils just a few drops and then just use it to kind of exfoliate rub your skin down really well um, and then you want to moisturize afterwards and if you just like don't feel like doing that or you have a burn um, our aloe after sun cooling gel is delightful and it smells like like the Hawaiian tropic, like coconutty smell. It's a Minoy scent and it is so wonderful. And normally with aloe gel, you end up getting like sticky. This one doesn't leave you sticky. It's really hydrating and soothing. So it's great, especially if you have a burn. Um, we've had to pull this out a couple times and it's really awesome to have. Um, so that's what I have for beauty counter sunscreens. And if you have any questions, just let me know. I can help you like help answer some questions or help you find answers. Um, and then there's like three uh, safer sunscreen options that I looked around in Target just to see what we had available in there. Badger sunscreen is a really great option and super safe. Um, Think Baby is another good one. And then Babo Botanicals, you want to go for the baby one, fragrance free. Those three are really good. Badger is always good. Um, and Think Baby is pretty much always good. Or Think Baby is the best one that I saw in terms of safety. So those three are good and they're like 15-ish dollars or less. So they're a bit more of a budget option. Um, which is nice to have. They do tend to leave more of a heavy white cast, so that is something to keep in mind. All right, so if you still are not sure, if you don't see those brands, if you don't wanna get a beauty counter one, but you want to see what you have, like in terms of safety, EWG is a really good place to take a peek and see where the sunscreen that you have and like the ingredients that are in there, where they rate. Um, you can do a build your own scorecard on there because they rate products um, EWG verified to 10 for safety. 10 is the least safe you can possibly get. And by the way, just because a sunscreen says it's baby doesn't mean it's safe. Um, Copper Tone Water Babies is an 8 on EWG, 8 out of 10. So just keep that in mind. A lot of the times baby products end up being the least safe. Um, a, a lot due to fragrance, a lot due to a lot of other reasons. Um, another reason why I'm involved in this, especially because if we can get to the um, health of people at the beginning, then we don't have to be dealing with it when they become adults. So something to keep in mind. Um, it's not perfect though, EWG, because they, they don't necessarily know like the company's standards. So they don't know like how they're testing their non-nano zinc. Um, so the zinc might come up as a red flag, even though you know that the company has non-nano zinc and you know that they're testing for it. So it's kind of one of those things where if something's coming up that seems like, doesn't seem like this should be a red flag, um, then that's where you want to go to the company and know what their practices are. Um, I know that beauty counters practices are incredibly thorough in the amount of testing that we do from the start of creating a product, um, like the single ingredients testing, all the way through its, um, the process of being created and formulated and then to the shelf, things will get tested up to six to nine times depending on what it is. So it's like, you're not gonna find that in most other companies. So I'm confident going with that knowing that the zinc in there is being tested for particle size. Um, 
So that's what I have to say about EWG. Check out the Skin Deep Cosmetics database and um, check out your sunscreens there. They have a sunscreen guide. Um, you can check out most of your products and see how they rate. Um, under three is typically where I like to see it. Three and up is getting a little into the, into the woods there. So that's a lot of information. Um, I said I'm a lot. <laughs> it's the evening and so my brain is a little like all over the place, but I hope that that was helpful for you as you're heading into the summertime. It's 4th of July weekend. Um, there's a lot of really, there's a lot of greenwashing on the market. There's a lot of products out there that look like they should be safe and then you look on the back of the ingredients list and it is just not safe. So just be educated and now hopefully you can be a little bit more educated on how you can go find a safer sunscreen for yourself and if you ever have any questions please reach out i am more than happy to help um, i have definitely had people send me pictures of their products and say hey do you know like what ingredients on here stand out i'd love to help you figure out how to find that information so I hope you have an awesome rest of your day and your weekend. Um, yeah, I will talk with you later.